Hello everyone, and welcome to another read-long. This is your friendly heads-up warning that we are going to be going into a critical reading of Zenith. That means it will not only contain every single spoiler, but if Zenith is one of your favorite books and you cannot stand to see it ripped apart into little tiny pieces, then this isn't the review for you. See you next time. Thanks for playing. Hey everybody. Doesn't Kinshu look cute? Kind of, she's got a resting bitch face going on. That? We're back with chapter 65, and we're back with Andy. And I'm just gonna see, like, they, they just escaped that. There was an attack at the festival at that planet they were on. They crashed landed mm. on the planet, and then they were at the festival and they were attacked. And then they escaped in one of the enemy's, uh, like, ships. Finally, a not glass ship. Yeah, finally. Um, so I think that's where they are currently. And they're flying off to try and get the general his son back because they really weren't in a hurry about that until, like, right now. So the tiny furry creature, apparently, is the reason that Alfie managed to find them. Sure, I guess. I don't know. That doesn't feel like a good enough reason to have this dumb animal. He could have just... They could have just been like, yeah, I scanned for you using my robot scanner and I found you. The presence of the little animal makes me feel like these... These people are trying to write something that they could have sell merch for, like, uh, we want to have a plushie of that guy, and, you know, I'd, usually you don't get that with books, but, like, some of these characters feel like they're here to sell action figures or something. So Andy is, of course, also thinking about the almost kiss that she had with Dex back at the party, and, and it says, As she looked at him, heat flooded to her cheeks. But her cheeks are made of metal. So, like, how's that work? I'm just curious. How does blushing work when your cheeks are made of metal? I'm curious why the general hasn't sent out, like, an escort to bring them in safely. Uh, they're in the system now where the home planet is, where the general is, and they're still just flying there by themselves. Which makes me suspicious, but I don't think I'm supposed to be. Like, I read too much into this all the time. Like, I was very suspicious that the robot showed up exactly when they needed him to save the day. And, like, the explanation that the little furry animal led him there doesn't, isn't enough for me. He was, it was very convenient. Ah, finally the escort is here. Thank goodness. Well, the one did come eventually. Basically, when they were ready to land on the planet, an escort came out. One thing that makes me curious in this book, it's... It seems to me that maybe all the characters are supposed to be aliens, including Andy. Dex probably is because his blood is green. I'm confused by that, but, like, it's, it also seems like they're supposed to be humans. Like, I can't figure out what they are, and if they are humans, then they came from Earth originally, and, like, what happened to Earth... What happened to humanity? How did all of these alien species meet? Like, what is the history of this world, this I place? concur. Those things would be very interesting to me and should not be saved for the later-to-be-released prequel. I don't know if there will but be that, a prequel, but, but there should be. <laughs> I mean, that's like, I mean, people release the core books and then do the prequel later. Uh, yeah. The, those things are important to me but a good story doesn't necessarily need to be You don't them. need them, but I feel like this it's there's really a lack this book lacks a feeling of wholeness, of realness. Other than talking about this war that happened, there doesn't feel like there's any real history. Are yeah. the main are the characters the main characters humans? Is Andy a human? If so, are they terraforming from Earth? Are they at war with any of these alien species? Were they at war with any of these alien species because humans came onto the scene? Like, even, even I, who am not a world builder in the game, have a brief moment where we talk a little bit about, like, humans and how they're colonizing and, like, their sectors of space and who they're allied with and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It is not even that long, but that, that little bit of history lets you know what's up with this place and gives you a feel for the, the I don't know, mood, tone, overall, something. Atmosphere. Words. And yeah, I mean, all those things suffice. Like, is this a gothic horror? Like, yeah, no. It, it builds the world to know those things, and it doesn't, you don't have to do a whole fucking history book. You can just mention it briefly. Now we're on to chapter 66, but we're back with Dex, so let's see how our favorite boy is doing. The first sentence makes me laugh. Dex fancied himself a rugged man. Oh, honey. That's cute that you think that about yourself, but it has been demonstrably untrue. I love that he thinks that he's a rugged man. I don't know how he survived this long as a bounty hunter, to be honest. 
Mm. He's kind of a soft idiot. <laughs> In the most lovable way, I mean. So he lists off things that he survived, like harsh conditions that he survived and all that stuff. And the final harsh condition he survived is managing to stay awake in the midst of pointless meetings during his days training to become a guardian. So I think that's pretty on point for him. That's a that's an impressive task. I struggle regularly. He's like, I, I I've withstood meetings. great cold. I have withstood great heat, and I have withstood most powerfully of all great boredom. Powerful skill. The true hero that we all need. Mm -hmm. Here's another kind of redundancy. He blew out a breath of air. Unless he breathes something else, you can just say he blew out a breath or he let out a breath. Air is, is very much implied. So the rest of this chapter is just Dex feeling mopey because he wants to have a relationship with Andy again, but he feels that like, oh, I should, the best thing that I can do after all this is over is leave her alone and I'll just leave. And then the girls come onto the bridge and they form like a circle around Andy and he realizes like, oh, they just love her so much and they're protecting her and I hate it. And uh, we're just gonna read chapter 67 because it's only like two fucking pages long and we're back with Andy again. I like the beginning of that Dex chapter. That was very on point for him, but the second half was just too much angst and also see how how much Andy and her crew love each other, which we already know. We don't need to keep seeing it. They had a very, very brief conflict and it was over in like half a page. So, yeah. And I struggle with conflict too. That's something that I do struggle with is like, I want my characters to be good friends and happy with each other too. But like, then you gotta have conflict from somewhere else. Like, you can't just keep talking about how happy and awesome they are together. Something has to happen. <laughs> People have written books where everyone's just happy together, but... And I mean, like, you don't, you can have some interpersonal conflict and still have them, like, be happy together. Or at least civil to each other. Like, the two of us are... We are a happy, successful relationship. We even do videos about it. But, like, we came to near blows the other day talking uh, military tactics. He's being a little bit dramatic. We did not come to near blows. Okay, you they are, were you, blows because we were correct. playing Amtgard. They that came was to actual blows. Yes, they both were blows. Before and after. You're playing Amtgard. <laughs> Foam swords, don't panic. Um, but like, I'm just thinking about like in the game again, comparing this book to my book, which isn't very fair because you can't really read my book right now and compare them. Eventually, you will the be able to. The anticipation build. Eventually, you'll be able to. Uh, I hate her for this too. And then you'll be able to call me an ass um, properly. You can call me that now. But in it, uh, the, their group eventually that gets together is fairly tight-knit. But even within it, Song, who's the main character, asks Five, who is very close with her, to do something that is like hurts him to do. And then at, for several chapters afterward, he's kind of silently mad at her. Like, he's not mad in a way that would endanger the group, but he's still, like, staying away from her and, like, just doing small things that, like or make her realize that he's upset with her, and eventually they talk it out or whatever, but, like, you can have stuff like that. Your characters can be still be civil with each other, but be mad at each other. When friends are mad at each other, it's, it's you know, it's not the end of the world. And they brought Dex in here, and the crew immediately, like, took to him, and Andy pretends that she's upset that that's a thing, but she's never really demonstrably upset that that's a thing. So... We definitely need a lot more interpersonal conflict if I feel like these characters are going to be strong and interesting. And I think these authors are trying to give us this beautiful, these beautiful moments of togetherness that have to be earned by a book and can't just be, they're together, they've always been together, they're always strong together. Unless the book is all about the external conflict. Yeah, which is not really, because it's all about these people's internal conflict. Like I said, if this book ever focused on just the external plot, it would be a novella. <laughs> Chapter 67, Andy. Andy's also being very uh, angsty because she's going home to the planet where she killed her friend and Val and sister, and it's like, oh, how many more times are we going to get that reminder? I think one of the things I don't like about Andy is she comes off as a very selfish main character, and I don't think the authors meant her to. Andy's pain is always the most important, and her crew is always rallying around her to make sure that she's fine, and she even at one point had to, like, stop and remember that other people had feelings, 
and hardships besides her. And I just really don't like that in a main character, and I don't think the authors were intending that. I think they wanted to just have a badass character who other people loved and followed, but instead they made a selfish character who everybody just adores. And when she does think about the girls, it's like how their, re their relation is to her, like how much she loves their little family, and then like how they always are there for her, and it's like, Andy, stop thinking about your damn self for five minutes. It's fine to have a selfish hero, but like they have to like grow and change. Preferably by the end they won't be this way, but that's not Andy's arc. I don't think she actually really has an arc. Alright, so this chapter is very, very short. As I said, um, Valen's mother come, she comes rushing out and gives him a hug, and then Andy feels awkward for standing there because she's still being very angsty about the fact that she's a murderer. A murder hobo, if you will. Indeed. <laughs> Amongst the galaxy's best murder hobos. We're getting closer. I feel like we're actually making progress now. We're getting closer to the end. Mm -hmm. But man, yeah, this has been a slog. Oh my goodness. Dex gets the last chapter. That makes me happy. Well, come back to chapter 68 with Andy. The general didn't even come out to greet them. Clearly, he, he's not all that concerned about his kid. Because he didn't even, they just have to go to his office, apparently. The general's wife came out to greet her son, but the general's like, nah. And the general knows it's a fake. Yeah. It's a fake or that he's been brainwashed or something. Mm hmm so There's that whole thing with Nora's mother and the general. So, like, I feel like he's somehow complicit in all of this. And it's going to turn out to be some sort of big twist, and that's why it needed to be Andy that went and all mm -hmm. of this shit. Like... Maybe, oh, okay, maybe because Andy killed the general's first kid, he assumed that if he sent her on this mission, she would also kill, kill his other kid. kid. And he just wants his children dead. Because mm, they're all incompetent and he needs his bastard child in charge. Or Some of them. They're not his true-blooded children. Ah, they're with the, the queen that he, like, stole. Nora's mother. Uh, I've lost track of the people, I'm sorry. Nora is the e current evil queen, and her mother was the previous evil queen who went off with the general never to be heard from again. Mm. So, it seems likely that she was mistress, and potentially neither of these children are actually those of his, of his real wife. I see. Maybe. Yep. I don't yep. know. Crazy Maybe. theories abound. Share yours in the comments below before we get the answers. Wow. So, I accidentally, I didn't remember which, which page I was on, so I accidentally started reading the wrong page, but the first sentence of this page is almost identical to the first sentence of this page, so clearly nothing terribly important happens on this page. Here's another little writing tidbit for you. It's kind of to do with filtering. Some of you may be familiar with filtering, which is like holding the reader at arm's length and not letting them see through the character's eyes. Um, Andy is, uh, you know, pointing out to us, the reader, because we're in her head, that the general didn't come down to greet his son. And then she said, That Andy had always known was something Kaylee would never have done. You don't need Andy had always known, because we are in Andy's head. You can just say, That was something Kaylee would never have done. We understand that it's Andy who knows it. I find it rather telling that the general still uses human servants to clean his house when he could be using robots. I don't think the authors really thought about that. But it's more empowering <laughs> to make people subjugate themselves I to mean, servitude for. Not to mention, if he's the rapey type. Uh, yeah. Or, if you want to take it to the good side, maybe he's simulating the economy because, you know, like, he's paying people instead of just using robots. Just in case, we had somehow forgotten what happened to Kaylee. We are told again. I mean, the book is pretty mind-numbing. You might have forgot. No, because the mind-numbing thing is they won't shut up about what happened to Kaylee. Over and over and over we're told. They're really, like, they're driving this home so hard, I'm waiting to see if that's the twist and, like, that's not really what happened to Kaylee after all. Oh no! We have a, a, a twist, kind of. So they go to the general's office, and Alfie the robot is standing outside, and he sounds like he's been reprogrammed, like he's talking very stiffly or whatever. I don't know why that matters. I guess it's just to give us a little hint that something wrong is about to happen. And then 
The door opens to reveal the general's head specter, which is... Can you guess what important character it is? It's a character we haven't really heard anything about, nor do we give a fuck about. Is it, is it the doctor that yeah. they didn't use? No, Andy's dad, who I forgot even existed. Oh. Hey, yeah, why? And she's all like, like if this was the movie, you know, it would pan away and be all like, dun dun dun. Thing, hi, Abby. We've reached a twist and it doesn't make any sense because it wasn't set up at all. And he barely thinks about her dad. She does yeah. nothing but think about Kaylee. Try the cheese? You know what would have been a, a really good twist? If it was a ferret? Yes. If she opened the door to the general's office and his head specter was standing there and it was Kaylee. Dun dun dun! That would have been a heckin' twist. Not, not, and it's her dad. So? Chapter 69, probably a cursed chapter, still with Andy. So she's obviously freaking out because her dad is the head specter, but I don't understand what that really means because, like I said, we've barely gotten anything about her dad. Occasionally she'll mention that she, like, disappointed him, but, like, she disappointed everyone, so really what's the difference? It never felt like she was either close to her dad or afraid of her dad or really had any feelings about her dad, to my remembrance at all. But now she's, like... She goes through a list of things that she's survived, which includes uh, heartbreak when Dex broke up with her, which is pretty hilarious. Seeing her dad there might just be the thing that killed her, and I'm like, you know, if this was foreshadowed at all, that would have been great. You can bet your bippy, though, that these authors are about to go, I bet you this entire chapter is mostly just her remembering things about her dad so that we're all caught up. Could have replaced one of those times when she was thinking about Kaylee. Keep wondering why they would be thinking about her dog. <laughs> I know. You say stuff like I'm that. sorry. Our dog's name is Kaylee, but she's named after the engineer in um, Firefly. Firefly, and not the terrible character in this book. Yes, sir, Captain Tight Pants. Okay, so it seems she was close with her father, and thus she disappointed him greatly when she fucked up and got Kaylee killed. Also, there's a ferret inside the couch. Dex is mad at the general because the general won't say why they were attacked on that planet where they crashed. But, like, it's pretty obvious why they were attacked. They had the general's son and the bad guys wanted him back. Like, okay. But then we, uh, Andy here says, Dex did a very un-Dex-like thing and stepped down from a fight she knew he wished to continue. And I'm like, really? That's, that's an un-Dex-like thing? He, he never struck me as a guy who gets into a lot of fights. He, he struck me as a guy who bumblefucks into a lot of fights. Guy who gets accidentally punched in the face often. But, like, not, not fighty guy. Definitely bumblefuck guy. So, I don't know why she, where she's getting this info. Whenever Abby walks by all business-like, I'm like, uh-oh, what's she doing? Andy is having a full-blown existential crisis where she just wants her daddy to hug her. And, like, what is this chapter? Sorry I said daddy if that bothers any of you guys. Daddy. Cave yourself. Shant. Oh, I know when Valen, Vengeance Will Be Mine, Valen is going to be have his mind control activated. Ooh, the general it. is going to be having some sort of diplomatic summit with all of his allies. Ah, uh, sounds about right. Yeah. One thing, I don't remember if you were there for it, but I was talking about, like, Evil Queen Nora is going to, you know, turn all of her people into soldiers, and that's how she yep. plans to win. But... I am confused how she has the infrastructure still to, like, have the ships needed and the guns needed for they, all of this. They built them in advance and stocked them up with stuff, and then they're just going to, they're training their people and filling them up on the ships, and that's it. They got no more bullets, they got no more parts, they just whatever's they in their no supply more train. They got because she's brainwashing her entire population to be soldiers. I mean, or maybe they got robots doing that stuff. You were talking about the robots. She doesn't seem, they don't seem to have robots on their planet. Mm, interesting. At least not that we've seen. Maybe once they're brainwashed, they can spend eight hours a day soldiering and eight hours a day doing civilian production for wartime goods. Mm. Oh, the general is clearly up to something. Because he's like, no one gets onto my planet. I'm, you know, I, I, it's a cage and I hold the key and all this stuff like that. Which is clearly indicating that, like... When the evil queen shows up, the general will have let her, like, pass the defenses or something. I'm probably reading way too much into this, but that's, not, that's the vibe I'm getting. You might be. And now the general's making Andy and her crew stay for the summit. Suspicious. 
in there. I'm just curious, like, okay, if the general's in on it, and our, my theory is still that Valen is a plant, yep. like, what's the point if the general's already in on it? Unless maybe the evil queen doesn't trust the general, so she's got the, the um, additional aid of having the plant? You're just guessing about these things. That, I am. So you're trying to make I'm trying sense to figure, of your guesses. I'm trying to figure it out. Like, I'm trying to make my guesses make sense so I can have correct guesses. Because you guys know, you've seen my other read-alongs, I like to guess things and then see if I'm right. Ooh, there's going to be a ball after the summit, so it's possible that Andy will have to kick ass while simultaneously wearing a pretty ball gown. Yeah, and you know that we have to have more opportunities for Dex to be like, mm -hmm. she's so hot, OMG. We haven't had enough of it yet. No, we have not. We do not understand understand the sexual uh, we, are, we understand we just need to take moments to appreciate we need more time. moments to appreciate yes. the attractiveness of our main character do you think these these authors wanted to get with their own main character just a at least bit? one of them yeah. <laughs> or wanted to be them and wanted the the other the bumbling dudes to get wants to get with them dex does not have enough of a personality and this, the chapter just ends with like three paragraphs about Andy going round and round about how much she wants to punch the general and how much she thinks Dex wants to punch the general. And everybody wants to everybody punch the wants general. Everybody wants to punch the general. To be fair, he's probably very punchable. But that was, that was those two chapters. Yay, I guess. Now, Adam has things to do and I could have things to do. So we will see you again for whatever chapters. We read next time whenever that happens. It's that time again. It's time to shout out this month's lovely patrons. Lennox, Amanda, Thelia, Jenny, Joseph, Kim, Lisa, Sabby Panda, Sam, Sarah, Savvy, and Scribbling Cat. I'm still so astounded and honored that I have so many awesome patrons helping me out. You guys rock.